Hi guys, welcome into today's video. This is my favorite series I do on this channel each and every month called Three Stocks I'm Buying Now, where I'm getting into three stocks that I'm buying in the current month, which is January 2021. Let me be either the first or the last to wish you a happy 2021, depending upon when you're watching this video, okay? Two things and two things only I wanna do in this video. I wanna share with you the stocks, okay? What stocks are these that I'm buying? I would love to hear from you guys if you feel like these are stocks to buy, if you feel like they're just stocks to watch. I would love to hear from you guys in the comment section, by the way. But I'm gonna share with you what these stocks are, and then mainly the bullish case around these stocks, which is an important part, okay? I mean, some people are doing these videos now, and all they're doing is basically giving out a bunch of tickers, and they're just like throwing a ton of ticker symbols out there, and it's like, wh where's the bullish case on this? I think that's what makes these videos special. I think that's what makes this series special, is actually getting into like the fundamentals. Why are you so bullish? Why do you think this stock is gonna do great? Otherwise, you're just speculating in the end. If you wanna actually make money over the long term in the stock market, you gotta be able to formulate a bullish case and make an investment into a company, okay? So all I ask in return for this video is yeah, you guys smash that thumbs up button. I appreciate it. This is a lot of research work goes into these videos each and every month and all you gotta do is just slightly hit that thumbs up button for me. Maybe I can buy myself another farmer's market rattle-lap if I get enough thumbs up or maybe one of these Akai bowls. Oh man, those things are good if you guys haven't had one of those, have one of those, okay? If you wanna join Stock Hub, it's absolutely free to do so. That is our free Discord chat. We have about 40,000 members now from all over the world that just talk stocks in there. We got categories for all different types of stocks, value stocks, growth stocks, everything across the board. If you wanna to try to apply for my private stock group, you can do so. That is linked down there in the description. I will also have that as the pinned comment as well if you're looking to apply for that. All right, guys, let's start getting into this. Stock number one of three up here is TTCF is a ticker symbol in this one, Tattooed Chef, okay? This is like, you know, this is a stock that's kind of like in the $22, $23 range recently, about a $1.5 billion market cap. So a decent sized company, but not a huge company by any stretch of the imagination, okay? Now you guys know I'm investing in a company called the Very Good Food Company, all right? Now that, that investment for me, that represents insane growth, but it's more of a speculative company because the company's doing very small revenue numbers compared to something like Tattoo Chef, but that one represents like insane growth. I'm also invested in another company called Beyond Meat, ticker symbol BYND. Now that's a big brand name, right? A lot of people know Beyond Meat because they're all over fast food locations and all sorts of things, okay? So Beyond Meat's like super famous company now, and they have that big brand name, but they still have good growth behind them. But the way I view Tattoo Chef is it's similar to kind of both of those, but it's like an in-between. So it's already getting well-established like a Beyond Meat, but it's actually got, in my opinion, better growth profile moving forward than actually Beyond Meat. I believe Tattooed Chef Food Company will outgrow Beyond Meat each and every year for the next 10 years. And so this is why I've actually made this my biggest investment in the food industry. It's just such a perfect balance of risk reward and you guys know I'm all about the risk reward. Now this company, so they were basically just selling to like Trader Joe's, Whole Foods and some of those companies before under some private label brands, all right? But a big change happened a few years ago. They started up this own brand called Tattooed Chef and sales have taken off since then, okay? You're looking at a five-year CAGR of 63%, and this brand has really taken off this year specifically, all right? As far as the products they make right now, they're all frozen food-related products as of today. Now, that's gonna change over time, but as of today, they're only going after the frozen food category, which is a massive category, okay? We're talking about 55 billion plus dollars in frozen retail sales just last year. We're talking about $380 billion market per year year on a global basis, all right? So the fact is frozen food sales, this is a incredible opportunity. And for a company as small as Tattoo Chef that can grow into a huge player in this market over time, and I absolutely foresee them, I mean, my goodness, the sky is really the limit for this company. If you look at some of the numbers around this company, revenue growth, 68% CAGR, 640% year over year growth for the Tattooed Chef brand. Look at that, and that's with no investments in marketing or anything like that. Like no ads, none of that stuff, okay? They have 90 million plus in cash. They have 200,000 square feet of manufacturing now. They just doubled their capacity in 2020. They're gonna double their capacity again in 2021 to 400,000 square feet. So this company is in massive expansion mode and honestly should be for the next five to 10 years. They should end up with well over a million, if not several million square feet of manufacturing over time as far as their manufacturing 
manufacturing lines. This company is led by Sam Galletti. This guy's been in the food industry for like 120 years, okay? You're getting a, a veteran that is at the front of this company. And his daughter, Sarah Galletti, she's almost like a superhero, okay? She's just, I mean, doing a phenomenal job coming out with products, launching the products, getting them to taste really good. Like I've tried, uh, I don't know how many, five to 10 at least products now from this company. And I haven't had one thing that I thought was bad yet. Everything's been either okay or actually really good. And so how fast she can innovate and get those products to market is, is pretty spectacular. I mean, other companies have huge R&D facilities and can't get products to market that are actually good tasting in that quick of amount of time, okay? And then as far as the chief operating officer, Stephanie, she owns about 1% of the company, okay? And you know, she just, I've seen her on several different interviews now and things like that. And she's just, you know, one of those operators, man. She just runs the business, okay, and gets stuff done. And so very happy with the leadership team. Board of directors already building out very nicely for this company. I mean, this is such a young company. This is such a new company in the public markets and they're already building out a pretty impressive board of directors. I can only imagine where the board of directors will be five, 10 years from now, okay? And that's got a long way to go. This company is already in big stores. We're talking Walmart, Target, Sam's Club, Costco. They're already in a lot of those big stores, but they only have a few SKUs. Over time, they're gonna have way more SKUs in those stores, okay, because they sell phenomenal. So you might see their single serve bowls, smoothie bowls, and vegetable blends. The, oh man, those little pizza bowls, oh my gosh, are those things good. Like I've been craving those. I've been like going down to Sam's Club, like hoping they got some more of those like in stock and they just run out so dang quick, man. But I tell you what, those pizza bowls with the that pepperoni on top, oh my gosh, and it's like their own pepperoni they make. Yeah, I gotta say that stuff is amazing. Then they also have their plant powered pizzas. And so, you know, this is a company that, oh my gosh, they have the branding, right? They, they have the right strategy. They have the product. They have the product execution. And then look at this, okay? Look at how many different SKUs they've developed just this year. Many of these SKUs have yet to hit store shelves, okay? But basically what they're gonna be able to see is how do each of these SKUs sell and what retailers should get what SKUs in the end? And I think it's a brilliant idea. You wanna see what, what you know, will stick out there. I think that's brilliant. In 2021, they're expected to launch 62 SKUs, okay? I mean, this company, you know, you can't find a food company innovating this fast a food or drink company innovating this fast like it's incredible they're just they're just destroying it okay as far as marketing they're going to actually launch their first marketing campaign in 2021 now this is a huge deal on several fronts one this is going to bring way more brand awareness to the tattooed chef food brand right that people just don't have but also, you know what else is gonna bring attention to? The stock and the company and people looking at this company and be like, huh, never heard of this one. Let me look into this a little bit. Wall Street's starting to look into it and things like that. And so I just see this marketing campaign as being so successful on several different fronts, all right? Now, they also just recently launched an e-commerce site, which essentially you can buy the products for a little more expensive than what you would pay at you know stores for the product and things like that. But I don't really look at this as like, a huge revenue driver long term. I think it's all about building out the email list for this company over time so they can basically contact customers easier, have a, a more one-on-one -on -one relationship, let them know when they're getting into other retailers, letting the customers know when they got new SKUs in, and also letting customers maybe try new products. I think that's a big thing. So imagine, you know, they launch a new SKU and, you know, before it ever gets to retailers, you know, people got to try it. And so I think, you know, you have those loyal customers try the products before, give feedback and then it's just like, uh, I mean, that's just beautiful, okay? So I actually view the e-commerce as not necessarily just a direct money grab. I think it's gonna be a long-term, like the right strategy to hopefully make a lot more money over the long-term, okay? Now, before the IPO, this company was very limited to Costco, Walmart, Sam's Club. And they basically had gotten in with some of the brokers there and they've been putting up phenomenal numbers. So you don't get into those type of retailers unless you're putting up some pretty dang impressive numbers. They've been putting up great numbers and that was kind of where they're at. Look at this now. Okay. After this company went public, look at the post transaction. The sales resources and infrastructure are off the charts now. Okay. They can go after everybody now, every retailer, out there, every food store out there, they're gonna be able to go after in 2021 and 2022. They have the infrastructure in place now, they have the sales resources in place, they're gonna need even more manufacturing lines over time, but everything's in place now, and that's beautiful. And they got a team built that can handle this, 
It's just a, a business that is scaling very successfully and I love the way this is scaling up, okay? Now, they've already started to introduce their products within the last 60 days at some of these big retailers, okay? Now, as far as the ones I think are gonna be the real game changers, Kroger, they're the big dogs, okay? They're the biggest in the grocery game. They're not even in Kroger's yet. They're gonna get in Kroger, I would expect, at probably the back half of 2021 in my opinion, or maybe the first half of 2022. Albertson Safeway, I mean, you're talking about thousands of stores there. Whole Foods, you're not just talking about Whole Foods, but you're talking about the relationship with Amazon because Amazon owns Whole Foods, okay? So that's why that is so big. And they're already in Whole Foods, but only with private label right now. I think these products in Whole Foods are gonna sell like hotcakes in my opinion. These are the perfect, these are like literally, if you think of the perfect retailer to be selling these products at, it is Whole Foods at the end of the day, okay? Target, massive opportunity. Most of Targets are only carrying like the breakfast bowls right now. I think over time, like that's a huge expansion opportunity because we know how serious Target is at taking like grocery and they love to have some of these new differentiated brands that, that do volume and this company does volume. And you look right there, it says, we expect significant official new business awards that will go into effect in 2021. So, you know, this is extremely exciting. This company has so much dang like, Oh, room for expansion in, in different stores that they're not even in yet. It's ridiculous. But not just that, it's things like this. Look at this case study by Walmart. They start out with a few SKUs, they sell so dang good that they get more SKUs and more SKUs. And this is a way to view it. I think Walmart, over time, I think this company, Tattoo Chef, could have 20, 30, 40, 50 SKUs over time. I think they sell that well and they're gonna do well enough to end up justifying that sort of SKUs over time. And so it goes from like, you only have a few to all of a sudden you have a massive quantity. And at the end of the day, Walmart's gonna care about what's selling. And the fact is Tattoo Chef products sell like hotcakes when they hit the shelves. And that's all that matters in the end. All that matters is the money. Like it's great that this company is seen as like a healthier brand than a lot of these old school companies and things like that. But at the end of the day, that's the big part. Do you sell? Do you put up the numbers? You do, you're in Walmart, you're getting more SKUs and they're gonna kick out the, the other products that aren't selling because believe me, there are plenty of products at Walmart that don't move the type of volumes that Tattoo Chef will move. And so those ones get kicked out, Tattoo Chef gets moved in. Look at this Target success, okay? In Target, our number one SKU is Organic Acai Bowl and it outperforms the leading brand's number one SKU in IRL food in both velocity, sales per store, and average retail price. That's like the holy grail of getting more and more products in a retailer, okay? When you can put up those type of numbers, you're gonna get more and more space. They're gonna want not just your current products you have in them, but more products because they're like, oh, you're, you're, you're destroying everybody else in your category. We want more of you essentially at the end of the day. So Target's gonna get a lot more SKUs over time, in my opinion. This company's vertically integrated. And that's amazing. So they, they come out with an innovative product. You know, Sarah can create something, new product. They can design the packaging, do the packaging, plant the products so they actually have like massive fields and all those sorts of things, grow the product, and then manufacture it. They do the whole thing. And there aren't that many businesses that actually are vertically integrated like that. And so that makes this company into a company that can expand so much faster, so much more rapidly than any of their competition. And that makes this stock so dang special to me, okay? Just one of the dang reasons, okay? I mean, you look at my Tesla investment, okay? Tesla was an investment not just on electric vehicles, but the fact that this was a company that was innovating so much faster than any competition, if you wanna call them that, Ford, GM, Volkswagen, Toyota, it doesn't matter who you throw out there, Honda, they were, they were innovating so much faster. They're so many years ahead. And still to this day, they're so many years ahead. And at the end of the day, companies like that, they just get a bigger and bigger lead. And so, so much money has like flowed into Tesla over the past couple of years because everybody's just realizing, oh my gosh, these guys have innovated so much faster than everybody else. They are years and years in front of everybody. And when you're innovating so much faster than your competition, that the lead for you just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and you're just uh, an overwhelming opponent to try to compete against in the end, okay? And so imagine where Tesla's gonna be in five to 10 years, but imagine where Tattooed Chef will be in five to 10 years. They're innovating far faster than any other competition. In the traditional food industry, the competition is a joke. I mean, if you think the competition was kind of a joke for, for Tesla and, and, and them coming in and, and tearing stuff up, you haven't even seen the food industry. I mean, it's pretty sad. Like, you know, Conagra Foods, I used to own that stock about a decade ago, 11, 11 12 years ago or whatever, okay? 
and it was a solid company. They sold pretty much the same products all the time. They did good volumes. It was a dividend paying stock, but at the end of the day, like Conagra Foods, like uh, what have they come out with innovative in the past decade? Like seriously, that does any type of volumes. I mean, seriously, okay? And this company has a $17 billion plus market cap on it. Kraft Heinz Company, KHC, okay? What has that company like produced in the last 10 years that was a game changing product for them? Nothing, okay? It's all the same stuff they're selling year in and year out. There's almost no innovation at a company like that. It's got a $42 billion market cap, okay? General Mills, $35 billion. What has General Mills came out that was game changing in the past 10 years? Nothing, it's all the same stuff they've been selling forever and ever and ever, and that's just their numbers. And that's fine for those businesses, they're gonna get their butts handed to them if they have to compete against Tattooed Chef. And if Tattooed Chef wants to compete against these companies over time, Tattooed Chef will win because they will out innovate. They will bring more excitement to their products. They will bring new customers and consumers on because they just like get it. They, they know the trends and what people want in their food and things like that. Like not everybody just wants to eat Cheerios every day like they might have wanted to do 20 years ago or something like that. By the way, I always used to put sugar on my Cheerios, okay? And like I said, there's nothing wrong with those companies. It's just over time, they're gonna get out innovated by a company like Tattoo Chef because a Tattoo Chef just innovates so fast and the other companies just don't, aren't gonna have a clue what's coming, okay? And so I think Tattoo Chef over time will pass up those companies. And you saw the market caps those companies had. Remember, we're talking about Tattoo Chef with a $1.5 billion market cap, okay? And you saw, I just went through those companies with you. So imagine what this company can go to over time. Now, as far as guidance for 2021 and beyond for this company, this is coming from the management team, okay? 2021, they're expected to do revenue of $222 million. In 2022, they're expected to do $300 million of revenue. In 2023, they're expected to do $500 million in revenue. And in 2026, they're expected to do $1 billion in revenue, okay? And there's the gross margins they have up there. They, they basically have a long-term outlook of 35 percent plus gross margins I think that's definitely doable okay my numbers differ from management okay management I, I think they want to like sandbag a little bit it's, it's smart you, you just go public this company has been public for less than a year you want to go in there with a little bit lower expectations so you can beat those expectations and you look great versus if you go in there with over expectations and you don't hit them you look really bad okay what I believe they're gonna hit for numbers over the coming years, I think they're gonna do $250 million of revenue in 21. I think sell-through is gonna be so strong. I think they're gonna expand SKUs. I think they're gonna expand stores, all those sorts of things. I, I think 250, and I'm being conservative, I feel like. I think 250. 2022, I think they're gonna do $380 million in revenue. 2022 is gonna be the year they hit the major grocery stores big time, and they start moving big volumes out of grocery stores, okay? But as far as big, big volumes in grocery stores, that's actually gonna be 23. Because 22 is really the year they start getting into a lot of those stores, okay? Maybe even the back half of 21, but 23 is actually when they start doing huge volumes. $600 million in revenue, I have them doing that year, and then 2025 is a year that I believe this company will cross a billion dollars of revenue. As long as they keep innovating at the pace they are and they keep this brand momentum going, I see no reason why they can't do a billion dollars in 2025. Uh, they're gonna have the funding for it, they'll have the cash to buy more facilities, to expand the products. There's just no way I don't see them doing a billion dollars in 2025, which is gonna be absolutely epic. And if they're doing a billion dollars top line in 2025, I think between $100 million and $200 million can be hitting bottom line that year. So, you know, if you're looking at 2025 earnings, you know, you're looking at a PE right now of let's say anywhere from 15 to seven, somewhere in there. And that's really how I have to value an a incredible growth company like this. You can't just value it off of like next year or something like that. It doesn't make sense for a high growth stock like this, okay? And so Tattooed Chef, it's a $1.5 billion company that I have a hard time seeing this company not be worth $5 billion to $10 billion long-term. And so I'm buying every share in sight I can get right now for this company because I am such a big believer in this company over the next five, 10 years, it's ridiculous. And this could be one of those stocks I don't ever sell. I'll just be completely honest because when you buy into a great food company or drink company, it's usually best to just hold them. Just hold them because over time, they will become a dividend cash flow beast for you. 
And then that money you just throw into new stocks in the future. So it's very possible that all these shares I'm loading up on Tattoo Chef, I might never sell them, to be completely honest. Even if it was to double from here or triple from here or anything like that, it's like, who cares in the end, okay? Matter of fact, I got so dang bullish while I was making this presentation for you guys here today that I went ahead and I just bought another, you know, 500 shares of Tattoo Chef while I was making this video, literally, because I'm just so dang excited about that stock in the end. So yeah, I think we'll do phenomenal with that one long term. I'm buying that stock in January and I'll, you know, it's very possible I could buy that stock throughout 2021 and continue to load up on shares anytime the stock is anywhere near $20-ish. Let's just put it that way. Alrighty guys, time for stock number two of three up here that I am buying actively right now and will continue to in January 2021 is a stock in which, listen to this, I have put $800,000 into this stock in just the past 30 days. In just the past 30 days, I've put $800,000 in the stock because I believe it is such a no-brainer stock, it's not even funny, okay? This is the perfect positive storm for this particular stock. I mean, it's it's like everything is gonna come together for the stock at the perfect time, okay? It's the perfect storm, but in a positive way. Super low valuation, and I mean super low. They have a turnaround going on. So this stock already had two very positive things that were, it's like a beating down stock, with super low valuation, turnaround is, is, is going on right now, which, you know, after the turnaround happens, it's, it, you know, you know what happens to stocks that, you know, have a positive turnaround, right? But then on top of that, this is the biggest thing. They have a huge invisible bullish thing that is about to happen in 2021 and 2022 that is gonna boost up their business in a massive way and Wall Street isn't even looking at this yet. I mean, they're not even viewing this for a second yet. It is such a big mistake, okay? Ticker symbol on this one is WBA, Walgreens Boots Alliance, all right? Like I said, I bought $800,000 of this stock in literally the past like 30 days, okay? Which for reference is me adding very aggressively. I don't usually just buy that much worth of shares in that short of a period of time, but I have to add to this one aggressively because the shares are extremely discounted and I think these shares are gonna start moving huge in 2021 and 2022. And so I'm like, I need my position built ASAP. I can't mess around and just be like, oh, I'll buy a little bit here. No, I got to get it built, okay? If you don't know Walgreens, they're the biggest pharmacy chain in the United States of America. I mean, they're giant, okay? They also own the Boots brand, which is big in Europe, as well as they have this other business called Alliance, which is a pharmaceutical wholesaling division. And there's actually been talks, you know, not that long ago that Amerisource Bergen could actually potentially want to buy their wholesaling division, okay? And keep in mind, Walgreens owns 27% of Amerisource Bergen, so it could end up actually making sense and it could benefit Walgreens, you know, several different ways. Amerisource might pay $6 billion if they were to buy that division. I think Walgreens should maybe take, I think they should consider it because at the end of the day, that six billion would be so much better spent on Walgreens' pharmacy related business in my personal opinion. So if I was Walgreens, I would say, let's do this deal. Cause you've got 27% ownership already in, in the other company. And so if they thrive more, you're gonna thrive more anyway. So I think it's an ingenious move. And then you get $6 billion on the balance sheet. And I think that money could be well spent for Walgreens on their on their pharmacy side of their business, okay? So I think that deal should go through. We'll see what happens with that. But there was also talks last year that Walgreens Boots Alliance could be bought out for $70 billion in the biggest private equity deal maybe of all time, okay? Now, I'm hoping that doesn't happen because I actually think the stock's going above that valuation over the next couple of years, okay? So first thing, let's talk about all three of these points, okay? Super low valuation. Oh my goodness, does it get lower than this? Four P of eight? I mean, think about the type of market we're in right now. And think about how 99% of stocks are at fair value or you know overvalued. And here you have a stock trading at a Ford P of eight with one of the safest business models I really view out there in my personal opinion. I know this business very well. I used to work for Walgreens. I used to be an investor at Walgreens many years ago. And it's always been a company that, you know, I think they kind of lost their way for a little bit. And, you know, I really see the turn is kind of happening in 2021. A four dividend on this stock of almost 5%, 4.75% I get just for holding this stock. Just I'm holding my shares and I literally get almost 5% a year, okay? Now, that's obviously not the main reason I'm in the stock. I'm in it for capital appreciation over time, but it's nice to be able to get that type of dividend yield. <laughs> that's a thing of beauty. But look at this. Walgreens is a, a, a kicked stock and everybody has given up on it. I mean, they have kicked it and just kicked it and just forgotten about it. 
And this stock is the second worst performing stock in the Dow 30. It is dang close between them and Boeing essentially at the end of the day. I mean, Boeing and Walgreens have been, have been battling it out for the worst performing stock. Boeing obviously devastated because travel completely devastating and Boeing is like their main business is selling planes. So that's like, it makes sense. Walgreens is just, you know, unjustifiably beaten down in my personal opinion. And people just don't like really know what's about to happen there. But that stock's been hammered. I'm not sure if you guys have ever heard of the strategy, but some people actually implement the strategy. What they'll do is they'll buy the, the number one and number two, like worse performing stocks in the Dow right before the new year. So they'll buy it in like December or January, something like that, and kind of like place their bet that that stock's gonna actually perform really well in the upcoming year. I don't do that strategy and I'm not doing that strategy. I'm buying Walgreens because I love that company, but I just know that is a strategy that some people do out there. And uh, I, I don't know, it's, uh, some people do it, man. The turnaround's going on for this company right now. They've been cost cutting like crazy the last couple of years. They're expected to have $1.8 billion in cost reduction by 2022. They're like, like they're on track for that. The company has said that. So, I mean, we're talking about the profitability for this business should increase dramatically over the next couple of years, regardless of this other thing I'm about to talk about. But just based upon the cost reductions, it's huge. But there's this huge bullish thing that is about to happen and Wall Street has not picked up on it. They will within the next few months, I can almost guarantee that they will, but they haven't picked up on it yet, okay? Walgreens has begun to administer some of the Roni Rona vaxes, okay? Now, as of right now, they're actually having their workers actually go to long-term care facilities, nursing homes, things like that, and give them out. But guess what? As soon as around April hits, they're actually gonna be able to start giving out like the vaxes in their stores and in mass. Okay, they're gonna be one of the biggest distributors, them and CVS, so CVS will benefit from this as well. People, you know, I know there's gonna be some people probably that are CVS shareholders, you guys will benefit as well from this, okay? You know, just cause, you know, Walgreens benefit doesn't mean CVS is gonna lose. CVS can do really well with this as well. CVS and Walgreens will be, in my opinion, the two biggest distributors of Roni Ronavaxes in the United States of America, okay? And look at this, okay? 80% of the US population is within seven miles of a Walgreens, okay? 80% of the population, which means Walgreens is in such a phenomenal position when you need your Roni Ronavax to go to a Walgreens because it's dang close by. I mean, a lot of you guys try by you know Walgreens probably every single day, right? And, and probably several different Walgreens because they're practically on every dang corner in the United States of America, okay? And so WBA is gonna give out millions to tens of millions of these shots in 2021 and 2022. Now, there's also talk that you know the Roni Rona could kind of change over time and we're already kind of seeing that. And so it could be possible that the Roni Rona, at least for the coming years, could actually become a regular thing, kind of like people get flu shots, okay? So that's something really, really big to think about. But because of all these shots, it's not that that number is just gonna help out the company. You know, you, you, know, you make some money on the, the Roni Rona shots, right? But it's really that in-store sales are gonna boom because of this, okay? All those people coming to your store, so much more foot traffic of folks that might have never come to a Walgreens, but hey, they gotta go to Walgreens because they wanna get their running Ronovax, okay? And next thing you know, you're in Walgreens, maybe you just get your shot and you go straight out, maybe you stay around, you grab a water, you grab some Advil, you get a prescription filled. Like, there's so many things for sale at Walgreens, right? And Walgreens does a phenomenal job of when you actually go in there, like selling you many different things. Like, I used to work for the company, like they're, they're, they're pretty good at merchandising and uh, getting you to buy a bunch of stuff you never even planned on buying essentially at the end of the day, okay? Impulse buys and those sorts of things. And so Walgreens is gonna end up also becoming more relevant than ever before. Because all of a sudden, you know, maybe you hadn't gone to Walgreens for years because that's not a normal store you go to, but all of a sudden you go there and it's more on your radar and it's more relevant to you. All these things are phenomenal. And for a beaten down stock like this, if you just get your comp store sales to go a few percentage points higher, I mean, we're not talking about you double your business or something like that. I'm just talking a few percentage points higher and your stock is already the most beaten down stock pretty much in the entire Dow 30. You're talking about your stock booms, okay? Booms over time. Now also, the Walgreens always does a phenomenal job with like in-store branding and branding other products and telling you about other services and I bet you they're gonna do a pretty dang good job of that when you come to get your running run of access. They're gonna get the word out about Walgreens online delivery, which is a business that has been, you know, had some amazing numbers recently. Walgreens is getting more and more serious when it comes to their app, online delivery, curbside pickup, all those sorts of things. And so Walgreens is like, you know, they're just like, that's gonna be a huge business for them in the future. And so the way I'm viewing the stock, WBA, 
I'm buying about a million dollars worth of stock, okay? I'm gonna make a million dollars in the stock in my opinion. And why do I believe that? Because of all the things I just shared with you. And I also think there's a very, very low probability that I lose money. So if I put a million dollars in the stock, I think there's an extremely low probability that that million goes to a half a million or three quarters of a million over the next few years. I think, you know, between the dividends I'm gonna get, which almost a 5% yield a year, and then the boom to business that I think the Rony Ronavaxes are gonna be, I mean, I think there's, it's almost impossible for me to imagine losing money in the stock over the next few years. It could happen, maybe I'm wrong on this, I just don't think I am. And I know this industry very well, I know this company very well, and I know how these things play out, and I have a pretty dang successful track record when it comes to playing turnaround plays. And so like I said, maybe I'm wrong here, I don't think I am, we'll see over time, we'll see where Walgreens stock is in a couple years from now, we'll see what type of dividend money um, I made you know, in the stock over the next couple years. But yeah, that one I really like, okay? So those are the two for sure stocks, Tattooed Chef and WBA. Those are stocks I'm you know, planning for sure buying in January. But now I wanna share with you three probably stocks. So it's three stocks that I'm gonna probably buy in January. It's not 100% for sure, but they're probablys, okay? So first one up here is this one. It's called Micro Strategy Incorporated. Take some of this one is MSTR. It's like a $3.6 billion company. And I bought this one more of as a, like a speculative play, okay? So if you don't know, this company has been buying Bitcoin like crazy, okay? And this is, I don't know if you guys got to see my video where I talked about, you know, if Tesla would ever move their cash or some of their cash to Bitcoin and things like that. Well, the, the CEO of that company is the one that talked to Elon Musk on Twitter. And supposedly they might've had another conversation offline and things like that about this. But this company has been loading up on big Bitcoins, okay? And they own over 70,000 Bitcoin now, all right? And so I bought this stock as just kind of like a spec play. We're already up 4% on it. We're up like $2,000 so far. I just put 50,000 and I was just like, you know, this is more of a spec play for me. But here's the thing guys, like if Bitcoin continues to go up and up, this stock is gonna be a beast, <laughs> okay? And so that's why I was looking at this one. I'm like, ah, and, and I feel like they're gonna buy more and more Bitcoin. I feel like they're gonna change the strategy of the business to acquire more Bitcoin and maybe other cryptos over time. And so I think this, the, you know, I, I, we'll see what happens with the whole business over time, but I just think this is gonna be like a game changing business. And I'm like, 50,000 over there as a spec play, let's go, let's do it, okay? Because at the end of the day, if Bitcoin continues to beast over the next few years, this stock is gonna be an animal the next few years, okay? So yeah, it's my, it's my only like direct exposure in Bitcoin. And uh, as of today, you know, you never know, time can change, but you know, I, that, one's, that one I'm pretty excited about. It's just kind of like a spec play, okay? So that's the first probably that I'll probably buy some more shares of. The second probably up here is Dropbox, ticker symbol DBX. I've already bought several hundred thousand dollars worth of stock over the past few months. It's a $22 stock and I'm gonna probably buy more. I mean, this stock is just too dang cheap. Even though it's gone up a decent amount since I bought, yeah, it's still way too cheap, and I need to buy more shares. I don't wanna look back on this one and regret not buying more shares. Forward P of 24, 25 in this company, and that's based upon the analyst numbers, which I think the analyst numbers for EPS next year are actually low. I think they're actually too low. I think the company's gonna report better than actually what analysts expect. But you're getting the cloud business, which is an incredible business, a very profitable business, and a must-have business. You get the e-signing of documents business. You get Smart workspace, I'm looking at this company and it's just too darn cheap, especially with a great management team they have in place over there. You're looking at revenue growth this year expected of about 15%. Next year, 2021, they're expected to do you know double digits again. We'll see where the number's coming out. I think they'll do 12% plus. As far as analysts, they believe 10.6%. And you know these are just really, really strong numbers for a company that's far too cheap. $1.2 billion sitting on the balance sheet in cash, in cash. I mean, you know, it's just too darn attractive not to buy right now. It's just, it's, I've gotta buy more of this stock in January 2021, okay? Stock number three of three up here that is a probably is Shopify stock, ticker symbol shop on this one. This is a company I've already bought a decent amount of shares in. I got over $200,000 in the stock as of right now. It's a pretty new investment for us, so it hasn't done too much yet. It's up like 5%, up 9,600 bucks. But when it comes to Shopify, I believe, okay, I, I've you know done a lot of research in this space and I truly believe, and I've seen kind of what's happened with Shopify over the last five years. I think most e-commerce is gonna end up running through Shopify by 2030. There's already a significant portion going right now. But I think by 2030, this, this company's gonna run most of the internet's e-commerce. I really do. 
it's it's going to be crazy. I, I mean, I can't. It's hard for me to see that many businesses going to another platform over time. I think they're going to run most e-commerce, and e-commerce is a future. Like we know this. Like e-commerce is a now, but it also is a future. And so. If that's true, and I really believe, I've seen the way Shopify innovates, I've seen how fast this company is growing, how fast they're going. I think this company could be a trillion dollar company plus by 2030. I think this is gonna be one of the most important tech companies or companies period in the world in 2030. And if that is, they're gonna be a trillion plus. I mean, you're looking at big tech companies are already trillion, two trillion dollars. That's today. Imagine 10 years from now, you know, a lot of those companies are gonna be five, six, seven, eight, nine trillion dollar companies, okay? And so is it, you know, possible to imagine Shopify being a trillion dollar company a decade from now? It's not at all, in my opinion. If you're talking about most of the world's e-commerce is gonna run through basically Shopify in some sort of way. And Shopify pays, Shopify app. Think about how much innovation this company's gonna have happen over the coming years. I mean, it's just epic, okay? So yeah, Shopify, I love that one as a super long-term investment. So, oh my goodness, guys, this was a beast video to put together tons of research work went into this i hope you guys enjoyed if you don't mind smash that thumbs up button help a brother out man i need to try to buy an akai bowl or something like that at target next time so i appreciate you all you gotta do is just slightly smash that thumbs up for me as always i appreciate everybody that's in the thumbs up squad stock hub if you want to join there it's absolutely free to do so i'll have that as the pinned comment down there that's where you can chat stocks it's the best and the biggest discord chat in the entire world to chat stocks with a ton of other investors all over the world if you want to apply for my private stock group learn all the strategies on how i make money exactly how i run a portfolio everything i look for in stocks plus so much more you can check that out as well that'll probably be the second pin comment thank you for watching and have a great day